So your wedding films suck. At least that's what you tell yourself anyway. And you need some help to get your films from meh to amazing. So today's video is all about six ways that you can improve your wedding films. What's up storytellers, Jared with an I here. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, this channel is all about giving you the confidence to lean into a full-time career as a wedding filmmaker. So if you are into that sort of thing, it would mean so much if you consider subscribing. When it comes to storytelling, building a narrative that is captivating really starts with your God-given ability, and that is story instinct. Instinct as told by Google is a way of behaving, thinking, or feeling that is not learned. It is a natural desire or tendency that makes you act and feel in a certain way. I can honestly tell you there is nothing more defeating than laboring over a film and spending hours perfecting it and pressing play for the hundredth time to get all the way to the end and just have that sinking feeling that something just doesn't feel right. Something's just not connecting. There's a theory out there known as the instinct theory of motivation, and it was coined by William McDougall, I believe a psychiatrist back in the day. Yes, this is a little history lesson, but it is related to storytelling, I promise. And he theorized that instinct is based on three crucial elements, perception, behavior, and emotion. We use our perception on the wedding day, using the lens to capture the world in front of us. The subject in front of the camera's behavior motivates that instinct even further, while the emotion both on the day and within the edit holds the key to telling a compelling story. You've certainly felt your own story instinct from time to time, that gut feeling that just tells you that something just doesn't feel right and just feels completely off, and you have to just rethink everything in that particular scene. Your experience also plays a huge role in your instinctive choices within your story, but over time, as you develop in your craft, your instincts will become more adept at recognizing what feels right and what feels off. First is to trust your gut feeling. Listening to what instinct is telling you can make or break your film. And if it's telling you that something feels off, don't be afraid to go back to the drawing board so that you can make this moment even more powerful. Number two is learn from other filmmakers. It's important to get real specific about what you like and what inspires you as an artist. That way you can examine patterns and you can incorporate those patterns into your own work to develop your own unique style. Number three, knowing what is wrong with your film really is the first step. So make sure that you analyze every aspect of your film, what feels right, what feels off. Send it off to other filmmakers to get a second opinion and get some constructive feedback so that you can discern what needs to be corrected and adjusted moving forward. Number two is music is everything. The songs you choose will say everything your audience needs to know about this film. There's no question that music plays a very decisive role in the art of storytelling. And if you've been doing this long enough, you know that music can make or break a film. It is a crucial component to cinematic narration and creating a balanced pace. So how do you go about picking the right songs for your wedding films? This really starts with getting to know your couple, who they are, their interests, their love language, and how they interact with each other on the wedding day. If your couple isn't afraid to be more vulnerable and open with you, then maybe it's good to consider something that's a bit more ethereal and ambient for especially the hook of their film. If they are more of the life of a party, maybe you can consider choosing a song that has a lot more energy to it. Leaning into your couple's personalities to dictate what song choice is really gonna help save you time within your workflow and give you a better end product for your couple. One thing to consider when choosing your music is to stay within the same key for all of your songs. So for instance, if I choose a song that's in A major, I'm gonna make sure that the next two songs are within that same key as well. This is good for a couple of different reasons. One, it is gonna create a very seamless and natural transition, making it feel as if this is very intentional and that it is one large soundtrack to your story. Second, this is going to keep your viewer engaged and connected because you aren't having any kind of abrupt transitions in the middle and end of your film. I try to do this for every single one of my wedding films and it is a great way to balance your film through music. A good rule of thumb if you are ever stumped when choosing your music is to start low and end high, meaning to start with something a bit more soft and ambient, ethereal even, something that's really going to introduce the emotion and not be too heavy. 
And then of course to end high, having something that builds towards that climax and builds towards that ending so that it really just sends off your couple in a really epic way. Also consider songs that have vocal tracks to them as well. Having songs with vocals is a great way to fill up space, especially if your couples weren't giving you a lot of narrative pieces on the day or it just felt very flat and having those vocals to fill space is gonna keep your film interesting when you don't have those narrative pieces to support it. And then of course, using vocals to support your narrative is also a great way to enhance the story that you're trying to tell. Another tip for music and sound design is to make sure that the pinnacle moments, the really high emotional moments of your wedding day are hitting those peaks within your soundtrack. Making sure that, that when you know the bride sees the groom for the first time or vice versa, that it is hitting on a just really emotional part within that song so that it is just heightening that emotion even further and just continue that trend throughout the rest of the song. I heard once that wedding films are terrible stories and there really is some truth to that because there's not really a lot of conflict when it comes to wedding films. And we are also already spoiled with the ending. So how do we really create an interesting story given that we already know the ending and there's no conflict? For weddings, this conflict isn't on the surface. It's buried and it takes a little bit of digging to find out what that is. For your couples, maybe this conflict is, you know, they lost a family member, someone that was really close to both the bride and the groom, someone that, um, you know, brought them together. Or maybe the conflict is the couple kind of got disconnected and through God's faithfulness, they were able to strengthen their bond and strengthen their relationship and, you know, come back together. There is some type of conflict in every couple's story. It just take some digging and some trust to find out what that is. And once you find that conflict, you can emphasize that within your films and have that as a central theme of your story so that you can create films that are interesting, that are relatable and that connect to not just your couples, but to strangers as well. Your wedding film should never feel like a blockbuster hit. It should always symbolize the real unadulterated nature of the human condition. Some technical ways that you can make your story more interesting is to do more research into who your characters are, aka the couple. This is easily done by sending your couples a questionnaire before the wedding day. I find that it is a lot easier for couples to share their heart and share, you know, a lot of intimate details about their life to a document opposed to a complete stranger that they've never met before, or haven't really made that connection with yet. So the questionnaire really eases them into the idea of sharing more of their heart and their personality. And then when you have all that research up front, you can dig a little bit deeper in a future call to really get more insight into who they are and dive deeper into those story details. Another way of adding more character and timelessness to your film visually is through home videos. Weddings are so much more than just one day and it's so important to consider adding more of who your couples are through home videos, through Super 8 montages, whatever they have available, pictures even. It's a great way to consider adding those elements to the story you're telling. When I first got started into wedding filmmaking, I had this impression that every shot had to be perfect. Perfectly balanced, perfectly stable, perfectly composed. But as time progressed, I realized that weddings aren't perfect. In fact, they are far from perfect. Planning weddings are stressful, the day is unpredictable, sometimes there's drama, and sometimes just things just don't go the way that you want them to go. So as time progressed, I was leaning into handheld filmmaking, I got rid of my monopods, I still have support gear like my tripods because it's good to have those items for the ceremony and speeches especially, especially for creating a more comprehensive narrative and having multiple shots to cut back to. But for the majority of the day, handheld is just my go-to. It's something that I'm so comfortable with now, and it really accents the emotion in such a beautiful way, in my opinion. There's so much power and freedom in leaning into the imperfect nature at weddings that you realize that storytelling doesn't have to be smooth pans or slider reveal shots or static tripod shots or even the epic drone shots. I think the best wedding films are shot handheld because it conveys a sense of realism and accents the emotion in such a real, raw, and powerful way. Remember, your shots don't have to be perfect. They just have to be captured. The story really takes care of the rest. Let the raw emotion of the day 
direct how you consider shooting your next wedding. There's really no right or wrong way when it comes to how you film your weddings, but for me, going handheld just adds a bit more character and nuance to my stories. Another insanely useful tool and technique that I use on every single wedding film is easiest to describe as audio decompression. Essentially what you're doing is taking the audio from all the dialogue of the day, vows, speeches, letter reads, and you're creating space within that dialogue to heighten the emotional impact. You have to remember the bride and groom aren't paid actors. So a lot of times the bride and groom will really rush through these letters and vows and make it a little bit more difficult. It really is a great way to take these moments and let them breathe, which is something that I love to preach about is just letting moments just breathe and letting them play out to create a very intimate and vulnerable experience. So audio decompression does two things. It enhances the emotional impact of what they are saying and it also allows your viewer time to digest what is being said as well. If they are just speed reading and going through that super fast, you're gonna lose a lot of connection with this film because there's really just not as much emotion behind the words. Everything is rushed, everything is just so quick because they're nervous. So being able to space that out is gonna really help you um, enhance that story that you're telling with emotion. So I have never really been a formula kind of guy when it comes to wedding filmmaking because no two weddings are ever the same and it's important to make sure that each film has its own character and personality. However, that doesn't mean that you can't have a system that helps you get from A to Z within your wedding edits. So for me, this is the template that I use when I am just creatively burnt out and I am just struggling with finding inspiration. This is something that I just rely on time and time again. The first part of your film is of course your hook and your introduction. This is part of your film that is one of the most important because it's going to either retain your audience's interest or send them off looking for something else. You really want this moment to be engaging and something that connects to your audience emotionally. These emotions don't necessarily have to be sad. Consider your character and what highlights their personality best. Remember, you are serving your couple first, yourself second, and everyone else last. Consider introducing your characters with a funny moment or a really emotional moment from the day. This is going to be a better hook over a epic drone shot or details of the venue. Those shots are important for world building, but not for your hook. The next section after you have built your hook and introduction is really going to be where you build the world and narrative for the remainder of the story. Typically, after I've introduced my characters, I like to start to set the scene with where we are location-wise. So I'll include a drone shot or details of the venue um, to really showcase the beauty of where we are and again, build that world. And then I follow the rest with really a chronological timeline of the wedding day. That includes bride prep, groom prep, letters, first look, uh, ceremony, portraits, reception, and then of course the send off. But of course, if you want more information on storytelling and how to really enhance your storytelling skill set as a wedding filmmaker, my good friends over at Hello Tomorrow Films has an amazing course all about story and why story is king. So I highly suggest checking those guys out if you haven't already. Their films are just so cool, so awesome, makes me just question everything about myself and everything that I do as a wedding filmmaker. They're just awesome. So just be sure to give them some love and check out their course if you want to really enhance your skill set as a storyteller. All right, guys, well, that is the end of this week's video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you found this information helpful or valuable in some way. If you did, it would mean so much if you consider liking and subscribing and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys and let me know what you're struggling with when it comes to your wedding films. Is it the story? Is it the shot selection, the color grading, the music selection? Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys. So until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.